Well, on Saturday in the Rose Bowl, it'll be a battle of strength versus strength, offense versus defense, as the Bruins welcome in the Bowling Green State University Falcons in the MAC. As UCLA says, all right, we'll go strength on strength. Will it be hot in the Rose Bowl? Yeah. Will it be hot offense, hot defense? Who knows? Let's get started. Let's hit this music. Let's get rocking and rolling. You are locked on UCLA, your daily podcast on the UCLA Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, it's your host, Zach Anderson Yoxheimer, alongside. Oh, there's a twin. He looks somewhat familiar. And that's Jacob Handy. I, I thought I had Zach Handy today. It's, it's, it's Jake Handy. I, I scheduled wrong. Or, but or it is, is it? Or is it? Or did you no. just tell you it's Jake and, and Zach's? You're, you're not that identical. It's fine. This is Locked On UCLA. Thanks for making it your first listen each and every day. It's free wherever you get your podcast Apple, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you get it. And go to YouTube, like, comment, subscribe to the show, and just you can look at us. We don't have pretty faces. We have ugly mugs. But, you know, if you want to watch on YouTube, it can be engaging that way, too. Or if you just want to listen, audio only, do that. Engage with the show Twitter, at Locked on Bruins. There's Jake's Twitter. I'm Zach Anderson, Yoxheimer, play-by-play D1 broadcaster. And Jake is also a play-by-play D1 broadcaster, diehard Bruin fan, and now you work at Fox Sports. Well, congrats on the new gig. And maybe we'll Thanks, be congrats man. on UCLA victory maybe this week as we kind of continue. I'm thinking this so. Hey. Sorry. It's looking that way, but it's all good. It's all good. We continue this detailing of the preview for Bowling Green. In recent episodes, we talked about what is something that's been that hasn't helped them lead to success, which was their offensive line. The running game's been atrocious from last year. Growing a little bit, but they lost their starting tailback. But the thing that the Falcons leaned heavily on last year and look to do the same here in 2022 is their defense. And of course, what does UCLA love to play? They love to score points, play offense. Chip Kelly, what's his mindset? Go as fast as possible, run the football, score as many points, be as dynamic as possible. And Bowling Green wants to do the complete opposite of that. Be an interesting one. Getting a little crazy over there with Jake, but Sorry here we the, go. Uh, I, I got a dog. I got a dog, man. He's, uh, he's, we, we discussed this. Sometimes he's not quiet. Sometimes he's not playing with his toys. Sometimes he wants well, to. Well, these are the dogs me. on the bowling. This, these are the dogs on this bowling green defense. This is the name you have to listen to Darren Anders, who has been listed with every award to look out for. This guy is from North Olmstead, Ohio. Jake, do you know anything about North Olmstead, Ohio? You know, I'm, I'm North. Any, no, I'm just playing. I have. I know. I don't know. I don't know anything about no. about no North Homestead, Ohio. Uh, well, never been kid. to the state of Ohio. Just, just really, really to the state of Ohio. Okay. Well, this guy is as green as it gets. He is a senior, six foot inside linebacker, 230 pounds. Technically, has two years of eligibility remaining, despite being a senior. Two years, including this year. Anything that represents an award for a linebacker, like the Butkus Award, whether it's a PFN preseason first-team All-American, the Phil Steele preseason first-team All-Mac, Athlon Sports preseason first-team All-Mac, this guy is littered with things that are just praising him, a dominant guy. He's been He's an academic dude. He just does it all. Darren Anders, look for that name. He'll be running all over the field at the Rose Bowl as he wants to try and limit this UCLA offensive attack. Then you got Carl Brooks, Brooke Horn. Those are some more guys, the defensive line, linebacking crew. And then the secondary is also where they hang their hat on under their second year defensive coordinator, Eric Lewis, where they made vast improvements from the early stages of Scott Leffler's reign from the 19 and 2020 season, where they went through a bit of a a horrible streak. They lost 10 games in a row heading into that 2021 season before they snapped it. The defense was really the strong part. They only allowed 21.4 points per game and amongst the nation's best in fewest passing yards allowed, nine, they're ranked ninth in the FBS, all of the FBS, the nation, where they found 
just a different way to to stop the teams. They were just dominant and ready to go. They have Devon Ferguson, Jordan and Anderson. Those are just a couple of names to be listed. They played Minnesota last year. I keep referencing this Bowling Green Minnesota win last year. They only allowed 59 yards passing. Could you imagine that? They went to a Big Ten team, Jake, and only allowed 59 yards passing. Yeah, that's definitely, even if they don't come away with the win that day, that's like the moral victory of the game. Like when you're looking back on Monday morning in the coaches room, you're like, okay, but where did we win this week? That was definitely one. So they beat Minnesota, only allowed 59 yards passing. Bowling Green in that game only went two for 13 offensively on third downs. They forced two interceptions, forced two fumbles. Only one was lost, had four sacks. So defensively, it's a very strong unit. But what does UCLA love to do, Jake? What do they love to do? Are they do they do DTR really going to air it out? They do have some nice receiving options, which we'll get to in this next segment. But what what do they love to do? What does they want to run the ball? Truly they want to they want to give it to Zach Charbonnet and a and a handful of backs and just they want to run it. They want to run it and then they want to run up to the line again and then they want to run up to the line and then they want to run it again. Again and again and again. And that's kind of where this Bowling Green defense is a bit vulnerable. They allowed 30 rushing touchdowns last year, rushing yards of close to 200 yards per game. They gave up about 187 yards per game. So while this is a team that's very, that kind of hangs their hat defensively, looks to make some improvements, obviously. They know UCLA wants to run the football. Bowling Green will game plan for that, and they'll expect to just see DTR. Keep it a couple of times. Charbonnet, Keegan Jones, whatever little options they want to run with the Cads Allen if they want to find him and get him the football. But for UCLA, they're going to have to go against the defense that does allow some rushing yards, at least coming from last year. You can't always go from one year to the next, but just looking on recent trends, it was – where they allowed a lot of running. UCLA is able to put their game plan forward, which is going to be running the ball. I think it's a good opportunity. I mean, Zach Charbonnet is going to lead these acts, but the depth last year, um, as far as this year, you still have guys that need to prove themselves. So it'll be good for the younger backs to get, if you're able to get a, a hold of this defense and re really put a big number, give you great confidence once you go forward to the end of this pre-conference play and then in a conference play. So it could be just what they ordered uh, for guys when they get in, hopefully to break a big run or give them confidence that they're, uh, they're going to do well in this offense. So we'll get to more of the offense coming up in a moment, but first some words from our friends at bed online as we talked the bowling green defense, but what what's, what's the best way to kind of get your gambling on, get your betting needs, get your sports info for the year. Bet Online is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's opening week's games. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including Major League Baseball. MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. Where it starts. Where it starts. As we welcome in Jay Candy back to the podcast. You know what we forgot to start with? I know, but you know I you know I'm bad at it and it makes me uncomfortable. So I didn't. I just let it go. I just let you, it go. You, we, how you, how can you be bad? How can you be bad at? <laughs> you know, can, just, how can, I don't and, know. My Wi-Fi is never up to date with it. I just, I just, I'm not any good. I don't know. I'm so. This is the way we're gonna spin this. This is the way we're gonna spin this for those of you listening at home, for your watching. If you're acting, why are we being fools this time? It's a long week. It's a holiday weekend. It's hot. Brains have been melted. Well, this is how I'll say it. We started talking Bowling Green first, and now that we're talking more of the Bruins offense, get those hands in the air, Bruin fans. We're excited for a DTR-led <laughs> offense. Come on, Jake. Get, get some excited here. in there. I'm get a here. They're, look, they're out of frame. They're so high, they're out of frame, dude. Okay, let's go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You, see, see, L.A. You see, L.A. Fight, fight, fight. 
Well, Dirk's even Dirk's hearing it now. He's ready to go. Yeah, Dirk, Dirk, uh, Jake's pup. You might see him in the background. Not, not like Zach. It is funny. They're twins. So your brother Zach did have a dog come run. You had your sister's dog come run in, in the background. Oh, but oh. all right, these are the these are the guys we're gonna expect to kind of bark on the field, be excited. Go get the, you know, go the end zone. Get the real treat. Get the victory. Get the six points. Get get rocked and getting rocking and rolling. So Jake, as we get to this UCLA offense, we just discussed how Bowling Green in the most recent year, under their second year defensive coordinator Eric Lewis, they're vulnerable to the run. Who do you think you would like to see UCLA step up and use in that first game and get all their weapons working? Would be too easy to say Zach Charbonnet because he's just going to get hit early and then he'll be done by. By like halfway through the third quarter, and and we sit him the rest of the way. But red shirt fresh. I want to make sure I get his name right before I do it. Okay, yeah, Deshaun Deshaun Merle is probably they're going to look to hopefully Deshaun get, Merle, yeah, yeah, to get a breakout game from and to get that early season confidence. So he's walking around campus next week, feeling really, really. Good. Competition starts to heat up. He's his confidence is going, and he'll be in form. That is who I would look for in the run game. Um, Especially because it's it's going to be extremely hot at the Rose Bowl. We talked about it. It'll backs, be like, brutal. Crazy with that heat. They're going to be cycling players in every position, especially like the running backs. You're going to get a lot of opportunity. I say Charbonnet, if the game's going UCLA's way, what maybe gets 18 carries. If if it's a big blowout, he shouldn't see anything close there to would be no carries. Need. No need. But I mean, I like, I like your thinking with Deshaun getting some carries. Keegan Jones listed at number two on the depth chart. And me, who follows college football, can't always trust those depth charts. And Chip Kelly sometimes doesn't uh, always know, like to give away. These coaches are so paranoid. They're they're going to put a guy there, so then you start scheming against him. But then they got, like, the little hidden gem listed, like, three or four down there. And then they got, like, two, two packages for him. And he pops and hits you for three plays. Early in the season, the depth chart is, like, a guide. But it's definitely not in stone. Yeah, as play-by-play -play broadcasters, we would know. We're looking at it. You go down. All right. As much as I said, who do we expect to start looking at Chip Kelly's initial depth chart release? Eh, it can switch. And a lot of guys will be used who aren't on that depth chart in week one. It's 103 degrees. We're going to see it's the Jake Bobos in company. But we would like to see Jake Bobo put in some yards. I'd like to see Kaz Allen put in some yards. I'd like to see, this is who i like to see, Michael Aziki catch a touchdown. Hudson Habermill, who just got put on scholarship, catch a touchdown pass. I'd like to see those tight ends who, with some departures, losing some guys to the NFL, i like to see the tight end group get some love, especially with the defense that can be vulnerable to the run, a good pass game, but a play action, hit a tight end up the seam. That would be a nice little get some guys some rewarded, reward them for their long, storied, academic, and now football careers at UCLA. Yeah, you've seen the tight end has actually been a really big part of this offense for like the past maybe like four or five years. You've seen guys go pro in the NFL because of it. You see, you see them throw to it a lot, and they throw down the field a lot. Up the steam, they'll go to it. Um, I agree with you. I think it would be nice to see some of those tight ends you listed get in the manda and get going early in the season. I just uh, you're gonna get so many opportunities. Some of these young guys, like you said, with that, it's early. You know, if it's hot and you're playing against the Trojans late in the season, sure, you're going to be riding guys out a little longer. But so early in the season against a opponent like this, you're going to give these young guys such a big opportunity this weekend to really see a big play early or something like that. Very exciting uh, in that sense, for sure. So UCLA, what would you say is a comfortable what, what would you say is a comfortable marker for points what what would you settle for for ucla scoring We're talk scoring wise about this another time but the spread is 24 and a half is what they want them or 23 and a half so they want that many i would say ucla needs to score 40 points like to feel good about, about like the offense executing the way they should it's bare minimum um to show lee is rocking and rolling you want the offensive line to look good because there's it's been some you know you got some veterans but you lose a guy to the nfl and sean ryan and and it's, you know, moves, switch a couple guys right, left, or something like that, figuring out the center position. Looks like John Gaines is going to be big on the offensive line. I would say four at the bare minimum to have, like, a good feeling about the Chip Kelly offense leaving one. Yeah, you play 1130 in the morning, Bowling Green. As, as, what, as much as I've said, this defense has been strong, especially last year, beat a Big Ten team 14-10. to 10. 
in Minnesota, a nine and four Minnesota team. UCLA coming in off an eight and four season. What's always everybody's been defining as the easiest non-conference schedule UCLA may have ever compiled or been gifted because of Michigan no longer being in the schedule. UCLA needs to start this season three and zero at least in the non-conference and just win by wide, wide margin. Which got me thinking, Jake. Which got me thinking. Okay. When was the last time not, UCLA? Not you thinking again? Oh man, me thinking. That's a whole. That's a whole other thing. UCLA has played one MAC opponent in their program's history. Only one. Do you remember what that game? was? Yes, it was a bowl game. What I have watched, like, it's in, in, in the recent It is recent, recent history. It is recent history. This is actually recent one of my history. kind of favorite. I mean, this isn't, I wouldn't say this isn't anybody's favorite Bruin team, but this is one of my more favorite bowl game memories. I mean, of course, with me growing up younger, I would look now to this, gonna, but now I'm going to feel like a dope when I don't get it. I, I I can't think of it. Who who is it, and what is the bowl? Okay, so while this isn't exactly the Rose Bowl or anything big like a Cotton Bowl or certain things, it was the Eagle Bank Bowl. Yeah, okay, no, the Eagle, Eagle Bank Bowl. Eagle Bank Bowl. Don't remember that. Yeah. Don't remember the Eagle. <laughs> you don't remember <laughs> the Eagle Bank Bowl? This is this is where I thought it was kind of funny. This is where we can parallel here. So when Temple, the Owls, who okay. used to be in the MAC, no longer in the MAC, this they sounds familiar. were they were in the bowl game against UCLA in 09. and UCLA was only in this bowl game because Army couldn't get eligible. Army was supposed to be in this game. They put it in the East Coast, and UCLA, while they were bowl eligible, they weren't going to get put in a bowl game. It's not like now where they have thirty billion bowls. It was a little tougher. Yeah, 13 years what, ago. I do. Remember. So UCLA had to hope Army lost to Navy, even though almost all the bowls were decided. They had to wait that extra week because remember, Army Navy plays the last regular season game. They had the big CBS game, all whatever. So UCLA got to play Temple. They go to RFK Stadium in Washington D.C. in front of a crowd of just over 23,000, and we can joke about how big this crowd will be at the Rose Bowl this weekend. But in Washington, D.C. on December 29th in 2009, the last and only time UCLA has played a MAC team before they welcome Bowling Green this Saturday, the temperatures were, I think, with the wind chill in the teens. And it's had oh, a wow. kickoff looking at the box score, 30 degrees with some winds. So it's funny. They'll play a MAC team this weekend in the Rose Bowl, 103 degrees I've been seeing. Something ridiculous. Some ridiculous toy. I keep seeing like that Last number. Time That's like the number I keep hearing. And the other time they played Temple, who was then in the MAC, 30 degrees, probably felt like 15 degrees. <laughs> UCLA won that game 30 to 21. They trailed that game 21 to 7 before a late Kai Forbath field goal at the end of the first half made it 21 to 10. UCLA comes all the way back, storms outscoring the Owls by 13 points in the fourth quarter on the heels of an Akeem Ayers two-yard pick six. You don't see many two-yard pick sixes. They did with six minutes left to take the lead, got a two-point conversion. Temple hiked a punt outside there in their own end zone, threw the back of it, got a safety. UCLA ends up winning 30-21. to 21. Who do you think in this game, Jake, who do you think has – the most storied NFL career in this UCLA. Those were two and... good name drops right there. Akeem Ayers and Kai Forbath. Um, list. Of Do you guys. remember who the UCLA starting quarterback was? Do you remember? In 2009. Before we get to NFL. Yeah, before we get to the NFL. Uh, UCLA went 7-6 and six and beat a then 9-4 and four out, uh, Temple Owls team with the loss. The Eagle Bank Bowl, baby. The Eagle I Bank. I missed that one. I must have. I must have been doing anything then. <laughs> I watched this one <laughs> while kidding. walking through the mall post Christmas. I'm like 2009. I was in high school, so I was probably up to no good. No. Um, who uh, was the, who's the? Come on, quarterback. I'm trying to think. We had a really good deal. It was the. It was. It was the Prince before quote unquote the Prince. It was Kevin Prince before Brett Hundley. Prince, when you said that, it was Kevin uh, Prince before 
Oh yeah, yeah well, when you said like the prince before the prince, I was gonna say well, obviously, obviously. Like, Kevin Prince, but I was like, yeah. he's the prince. I don't know. I got confused. So Kevin Prince, two hundred and twenty-one yards, two touchdowns in a pick, just over fifty percent completion rate in a terrible weather game. Nelson Rosario, our favorite guy, who made crazy one-handed grabs, eighty about sixty-six yards and a touchdown. And Shane Moline, actually the leading rusher for the Bruins and eventual leading rusher for UCLA, Jonathan Franklin, only having a couple carries in that game for a few yards. But let's say so. Those are those are the your highlights. Previous question. Between those, Kai Forbath probably had like the best career out of everybody. <laughs> okay. Franklin. Jonathan Franklin had some really good years. He had a really, really good career. I mean, Kai Forbath is but, still kind of. But, but we're talking. Around. We're talking NFL career. We're talking. NFL That's what I'm saying. Career. Yeah, yeah. For NFL have... career. I mean, Kai Forbath. I know it's easier to stay around as a kicker longer. He's still around. Um, and he was like no. the Texans' kicker for a long time. Um, okay, so I mean, this the key is, this is, is great. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stop you before you keep talking. You're gonna keep. You're just gonna dig yourself a deeper hole. You're you're missing the point here. You're missing it. Kai so Forbath so isn't who's... even the best kicker in the game. In this game, Kai Forbath wasn't even the best kicker. Oh, okay, yes, who a is Luke Raza Award winner? Obviously in college, yes. But the better NFL kicker ended up being current Broncos kicker Brandon McManus. Was he the Temple kicker? Or? He was the Temple kicker. I thought that, that was a funny pull. find. That is an insane pull because it was for sure Brandon McManus, a hundred percent. Yeah, they go and just think on that UCLA defense. They had Raheem Moore, who was solid. Remember the game against San Diego State where he had three picks in the season opener. Speaking about season Absolutely. opening games, but Raheem Moore, of course, remembered for that missed defensive play against the Ravens in the playoffs also for the Broncos funny enough but it's McManus who not only was the best NFLer out of all these guys that kind of stepped on the field who's who's still having a good career even though he was waived by the Broncos way back when and eventually kicked yeah, but a 60 he, plus didn't yarder. he at some point hold a record for longest kick like I think it's been broken but did he drill like 60 or something and hold it season or something and then I Tucker think he tied the it? record I'm not entirely sure it? but it, it's all good but Justin Tucker broke the record, and I don't know if it will be broken again. It's all good. I don't but think I just so. thought that was – I was like, all right, who is who is good in this game? You know, you have some air. You have, you have different guys. You had Logan Paulson, all different guys. Eagle Bangle with five future NFLers. When was the last time the Bowl had five NFLers in it? Between UCLA and Temple, a mediocre <laughs> UCLA team. I just I just thought I was excited. I, I was like, Brandon McManus. That's such a Temple? good pull. Absolutely. That's such a good, good pull. I thought that was funny. December 29th, 2009, UCLA beating Temple 30 to 21, overcoming an early 14 point deficit, an 11 point halftime deficit. They come back with a storming 13 point fourth quarter, dumped all the water on a freezing cold Rick Neuheisel at the end of that to win the bowl. Clinton at that time, their first winning season in three years from 09 back to 06. They finished seven and six. I was excited, walked through them all, watched that game. They came back. I don't think anybody remembers that bowl. Probably on the lowest of tiers for bowl wins for UCLA, but I, for some reason that just sticks out of my memory, and I remember that game. I mean, and game was star-studded. Five NFLers. It was a star-studded bowl game. I don't know. I mean, there's, I, it, it, it was for a small crowd. So I just think it's funny how ice cold it was, a small crowd that we're expecting a bit of a small crowd Saturday morning against Bowling Green, another Mac opponent, which could be a very interesting game, although much different expectations going into the game. I, I thought that was interesting. I thought that was interesting. I don't know about you. You know, I th- I assumed you were going to come with of, you know, I'm going to say when you told me to prep Paul Hersheiser poll with Bowling Green, because that's like the only other, it's like the only Bowling Green alum I know. And, and then Steve the Mason, Mac, LA radio the personality. Bag. Yeah. Oh, that's true. And Steve Mason. Well, you went yeah, deep yeah. So into those, the back. Those are Bowling Green. Bag and pulled out Brandon, Brandon McMahon. I mean, for you, Temple. Said, you surprise for me Temple. every time. But that's Mac. I mean, that's 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 Mac. Mac at the time, it was Mac. It was the Mac. That was the Mac. So when we come back, and continue to post more episodes. It'll be we'll we'll find some more fun throwback Thursday segments. I was like, you know what? Let's think about this. I was thinking about it. 
we went with our last throwback Thursday talking about the Rose Bowl and all that stuff. And this time I thought this was interesting. Last time they played the Mac, looking to go 2-0 and versus the Mac. This is Locked On UCLA. We're so glad that you're listening. Thanks for making Locked On UCLA your first listen each and every day. Now go check for your second listen, the ultimate pro football preview in 2022. It's an eight-episode extravaganza to get you ready for the NFL season. Your local team experts on the Locked On Podcast Network get betting angles from Lee Sterling from Locked On Bets. You can get it all into one ultimate NFL preview. Search for the ultimate pro football preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. For Jay Candy, once again, thanks for joining the pod. I'm Zach anderson Yoxheimer. We'll make sure to get this A-clap out ready on time. Get your hands in the air, partner. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You, see, you, you, UCLA, fight, fight, fight. And this has been Locked On UCLA. Go Bruins.